I'm live on Instagram. And I'm live on YouTube. Just when my neighbor is starting to hammer on the wall. <laughs> I really hope you cannot hear that. But um, we're just going to continue. The show must go on. Welcome. Welcome. I don't see any people here yet, but um, wait for a little bit and see if any of you are trickling in. Hello, hello. Today we're going to talk about how to keep your comic work fun and how you can give yourself the best chance of keeping working on your comic project. Uh, some tips on how to do that. Michaela is back on Instagram. That's so awesome. You were here yesterday as well. Hello. <laughs> also, please let me know if I mispronounce your name. You have a very long username. It's Michaela in in Chos in Chosti. Very sorry <laughs> if I mispronounce your name. Hello. <laughs> Welcome. Welcome back. That's Crazy to me that people would want to watch like two live streams of mine <laughs> uh, in the same week, like two days after each other. That's amazing. Oh, I will call you Mika. That's definitely, <laughs> definitely easier. <laughs> Hi, Mika. Thank you so much for joining again. I hope you can hear the the hammering on the wall. Um, very often. I I don't know. My neighbor has some kind of project where they just need to <laughs> do some carpentry on the wall. I don't know why. Limo Cohorte is back as well on YouTube. Welcome. Welcome back. Oh my, that's so awesome that you guys are it's coming back and watching again. Hello. How are you? How are all of you? I see some more people trickling in on Instagram, which is great. Very awesome. Cool. I'm just going to start and then see if more people uh, come in. Uh, it's just a little over seven o'clock. Bethany is back. Hello, Bethany. Hi. How have you been? This is cool, guys. Uh, this is awesome. Uh, just a short recap of what we're going to do. This is the second live stream of three live streams for this week. We're going to uh, go live on YouTube and Instagram. I have actually um, decided not to go live on Facebook because yesterday I had like three streams going and I think it was a little bit too much for my um, internet connection. So uh, no one was really watching much on Facebook. I think everybody who watched it watched it after the fact. So I was like, people can go to YouTube. <laughs> it's fun. So uh, it's just Instagram and YouTube. It's a, there. I put the cameras as close as possible. So if I sometimes don't really look into any of the cameras, uh, I apologize, but I'm doing I'm on like two devices. Um, but yeah, today we're going to talk about how to make your comic work or how to keep your comic work as fun as possible and give yourself the best chance of you um, keeping working on you. Uh, so that's what we're going to talk about today. Um, this is, of course, to celebrate the launch of my new class on Productivity, basically, is what it is on Skillshare called um, Create an Action Plan for Your Comic Project. And that is um, some of the stuff that I'm talking about in these live streams um, also comes back in that class as well. Um, yeah, awesome. And then, oh, yeah, of course, you can... Um, you can give me any comic questions, burning comic questions that you have on your mind uh, or any obstacles that you're currently running into when you're making your comic. Um, just anything. Just throw it my way. <laughs> we'll see how long we're going for today. Yesterday we went for over an hour. Um, my voice was pretty shot afterwards. Uh, my um, whole throat is still kind of recovering from uh, being sick um, a few weeks ago. So we'll have to see <laughs> because I do want to have a voice left for tomorrow. And then of course for the live stream on Friday. Um, so yeah, we just have to see how that goes, but, um, yeah, let's just start off with the topic of today. Uh, how are you going to keep your comic work as fun as possible? Um, because we all have bad days. Let's not beat around the bush. Anybody, like no matter how fun your comic is, you're going to have days where your drawings are not working out or you're working on a thumbnail and you just cannot get the paneling right or 
your software crashes or, you know, you spill ink over a page, the horror, <laughs> like th that kind of stuff, or it's just not feeling it. You know, you don't have a day where you're in the zone and it's just a little bit difficult. Um, we all have those days. And especially if you have an ongoing webcomic or you're working on a deadline uh, because you are working, collaborating with somebody or publisher, you just have to sit down and do the work. Um, but for, you know, the regular day-to-day, -day, like the bad, the bad days are just going to be there. But for the regular, like on the regular, how can you actually get your butt in the seat and start working on your comic? Uh, when you're maybe not really feeling it sometimes. And... Um, yeah, how do you kind of get into a comic mindset? I don't know if you recognize that, if I if I say that, but, um, you know, you, you just get into the zone sometimes. You get into, uh, into a comic mindset. And I kind of will describe what that means for me. Um, like a perfect comic day for me is I pack all my stuff. I pack my computer, my stylus and everything. I go to a cafe and I go sit down. I can also just sit down writing uh, there as well. And I've sometimes brought my sketchbook to that place as well. But what is really great about the cafe is that I just get a nice warm beverage. I sit down. I put on a certain playlist. I have a very specific playlist with instrumental music that I always listen to when I work, especially when I'm drawing. I'm one of those people that cannot have anything with text on. Um, because I will get distracted if there's like singing or if there's like a show. Some people actually can draw while watching shows in the background. I can't. I cannot do that. So I have an instrumental playlist that's mostly full of uh, more ambient music from video games. Uh, I will even get distracted if the music is too like more uh, is too actiony and too you know it's hyping you up a bit. Uh, so it's very calm instrumental. Uh, maybe a little bit mysterious music. And I just plow away. I put my phone in my bag so I don't have to look at it. And the great thing for me about working in a cafe is that I just know that I'm going to sit there for a few hours. So I need to do the work in that amount of time. And I also uh, cannot get up. <laughs> That's a very big thing for me. I cannot get up, walk around, make some tea, do some laundry and all that stuff. I, I'm way less likely to get distracted. So I just work there and then I draw and draw and draw. And that is like a perfect comic making day for me. And that is the stuff that I would love for you to think about for a little bit. Like what really gets you in the zone? Because especially, for example, when I put on a playlist, I've I've played it so many times now when I'm making comics that eventually you start associating the music with making comics. So whenever I hear something like that, I will immediately have flashbacks to other times where I was working and it was going well. And, um, oh, so I just walked some, I walked somewhere and then I got a really great idea for my comic and I had that music on, you know, those kinds of associations. Um, so that playlist will immediately get me into a working mood and like a creative mood. Um, so that's kind of, that's kind of, uh, um, the stuff that I do to give myself the best chance of, being able to get into the zone. And then, of course, sometimes you'll run into issues. But for me, the, going to the cafes, it's really, for some reason, I get so creative when I'm in a cafe. Uh, and for you, it might be completely different. Like, some people thrive having their own little corner in their house, um, having art all around you, like putting up all your favorite artist work. Um, you know, some you have a favorite drink that you make when you you are making comics, and you look forward to that. You get out of bed, and you have maybe the day off to work on your comic, and then you you make your favorite beverage, you put it there, and you have all kinds of cool stuff in your room that just makes it feel really cozy. And um, you know, some people have like really cozy sweaters that they wear, and then get to work uh, and get super inspired just by their surroundings. Um, yeah, if you are one of those people that can watch their favorite show <laughs> in the background of working, then you can just put up that, you know, and create the most comfortable environment. 
uh, for yourself. Some people love to have a little bit of clutter. Other people love to have a really clean desk and no distractions and they just get to work. Uh, so I would just encourage you to sit down for a little bit and brainstorm a list of things that can help you get into the brain space of making comics. And then when you train yourself enough to just sit down, you know, get a little comfortable, but also on the days where it maybe doesn't feel as it coming as natural days where you have a bad drawing day or a bad writing day on those days, you eventually just train yourself to sit down and on the really bad days, just give yourself like a limited time of like, okay, I'm just going to try this for an hour. And if it doesn't work out, I'm allowed to stop. And, you know, you can make that even smaller if that's still overwhelming to you. Uh, I am currently getting back into doing art again and doing writing again, because after last year, um, creating was very hard last year because of all the brain fog that I had. And I was so super tired. Um, I've talked about that in other uh, videos. So <laughs> uh, go check that out if you want to know more about that. But basically, I had, a, I had a year in which I wasn't able to be very creative. And um, it's proven hard to get back into it again, because I'm also still working and I'm working on videos, classes, and all of that stuff. Um, so I just give myself 10 minutes. I'm like 10 minutes a day, 10 minutes a day for Recollection City and 10 minutes a day for um, doing an art course that I'm doing right now. Um, and just the 10 minutes. And very often you go for longer than that. But that's how you, at the start, train yourself to actually make comic making a habit. And the good thing about the 10 minutes is that you can actually find multiple 10 minute blocks in your day usually. Uh, or when you're, I don't know, in line somewhere, you have a little notebook with you and you can actually, um, you know, do a little sketching, do a little bit of writing, figure out some plot holes. Uh, if you train yourself to grab those tiny bits amount of time, then you can actually still get a lot done in a week. Um, but especially also on the harder days, just training yourself to sit down at least for 10 minutes or longer uh, and do the comic work. Eventually, even on the bad days, it's not a question anymore of am I going to work on my comic? It's a given. Like, the time has arrived. I'm sitting down and I'm making my comic. It's not a question. It's become a habit. And that's a, the thing that you want to train eventually. And the stuff I want to go back to as well because I had a really really good habit of, especially when I was still writing Recollection City before, I would just go to the cafe, sit there for 20 minutes. I was like, 20 minutes just writing. And then on some days, I had like two lines written of ideas. And then on other days, I just kept writing and writing and writing. Doesn't matter how much you do, as long as you train yourself to sit down for that amount of time. And I just, just I would just for 20 minutes each day, no matter how busy I was, I could always find 20 minutes somewhere. And then on other days, I could do it for longer. 20 minutes a day, just sitting down, working, uh, you know, writing in that case. And that's what I'm trying to get back into right now. And for now, I've given myself the 10 minutes not to overwhelm myself. Um, yeah, so that's working really well. I'm actually on a vlog. I've never actually vlogged before as in creating like a video about how I go about like daily, you know, comic work and stuff. So that should be interesting. <laughs> um, I feel like I could still learn a lot about video making and vlogging is a whole new beast. So we're going to see about that, but I'm working on a vlog about that specifically, like getting back into making comics when um, you maybe had a period where that was hard. So yeah, that's what I'm working on right now. So uh, if you want a little bit of homework, just sit down, um, you know, for maybe 30 minutes today, tonight, and brainstorm that list of all the stuff that gets you in the comic making vibes it gets you in the mood to make comics um yeah that could be you know maybe you you figure out something new for yourself and don't i would say don't um compare yourself to other people like other people have like a studio and that's where they sit down and that's where they draw and i have to do that too like for me i always really wanted that but i just work so much better out of the house so i just accepted that for myself um Obviously, lockdown was not fun for me. <laughs> it wasn't fun for anyone, let's be honest. But like in terms of already not being too creative, um, but then also having to be at home where I get so distracted 
so easily. <laughs> it was really hard. I actually created a little uh, writing nook at one point and I would just not sit down there. I don't know why. It was so strange. And when I sat down, it was so forced. And I was like, ah, oh, uh, it wasn't, it wasn't really, uh, <laughs> it wasn't really working. Um, you know, eventually I just plowed through, but I think we all have our own natural um, way of working and stuff that just works for us and stuff that gets us hyped for the work or it gets us inspired. Um, you know, so, somebody might love to draw outside. I don't know. Um, if that's your thing, then just go do it and don't, um, don't have those ideas of what you should be doing. If something works for you, it works for you. Um, yeah. So that's the stuff I wanted to talk about, about, um, uh, getting yourself, give yourself the best chances of making your comic work as fun as possible for yourself. <laughs> Lemur says, I suddenly want to try writing outside. That sounds very clever. But you can get uh, distracted in a cafe. Yeah. Yeah. I At first, I just really liked sitting in cafes. I was like, um, I travel a lot for my job. So I'm on train stations a lot and they have oh, cafes everywhere. Um, I'm in city centers a lot, so cafes everywhere. And I just I just love cafes. I don't know what it is. So atmosphere thing. And then I was like, I get super creative in a cafe. Like, I don't know. I could just sit somewhere and then there's like this coffee lounge music. And, uh, <laughs> and then, you know, everybody's just, I don't know, even the sounds that the coffee machines make. It just puts me in a creative mood. <laughs> so, yeah, just look at what you, gets you in a creative mood, you know. Maybe it's nature. Maybe this uh, riding outside sounds really great, actually. So I would just try it out, see if it works for you. Awesome. If you have any ideas right now about what could really work for you, what, what gets you in a creative mood, please share in the chat. I would love to hear uh, from you guys. Lemur says, I would be afraid of being spoken to, though. Hmm? Yeah. Uh, sometimes it happens. <laughs> Uh, sometimes it happens. Um, usually people are polite. They just, they just go, Oh, sorry. I just want to say that it's really great what you're doing there. Uh, and then sometimes you get the, Oh, I wish I could draw kind of a thing. And then I have to be really, <laughs> I'm really tempted to say like, you could, if you really wanted to, it's, it's possible to learn how to draw, even though people tell you that you need to have talent. Well, uh, that's like a whole nother thing, but, uh, did it happen often to you? Uh, no, not really. Usually people, it might be a cultural thing. Um, but usually people are like, oh, you're working. Let's leave you alone. It's been my, um, yeah, it's been my experience. It also depends on a cafe. Like if you're sitting at, this is not product placement or anything, but if you're sitting at Starbucks, people are more like coming through. Uh, like we have a lot of Starbucks is on, um, stations. Um, the people just grab a coffee. So they walk past your table and then they're like, Ooh, what are you doing? Um, whereas if you're sitting in a cafe where you have one of those work tables or something, like people would actually not really talk to you, but that's the Netherlands. <laughs> I also noticed when I was in America, that people talk to you much sooner. <laughs> I was surprised by how much people talk to me, uh, like randomly on the street <laughs> in uh, the U S. So it might actually be, different country to country. So can I promise you that you will be left alone? I hope for you. But um, but yeah, for me, it, it doesn't happen very often. And then usually you just smile and then you nod and they say thank you and then they're, they're moving away. What really helps is have headphones on. <clears throat> People don't really bother you much when you have headphones on. Because said something on Instagram. Honestly, the sound of thunder makes me want to draw like a maniac. <laughs> I love that. I love that. Oh, you have so many of these playlists. You probably listen to those, right? You have those playlists on uh, YouTube and stuff where people put like relaxing music or just ambience. And then there's a lot of, there's a lot of ambience with thunder. I love the sound of thunder so much. It's really great. Yeah. Oh, that's great. <laughs> Uh, awesome. Yeah. Working in cafes. 
<laughs> once, but that was an extreme case. I sat, you had like a bench in a cafe with little tiny tables in front of it. And it was a bench uh, where you sat kind of in a row. And it was like this little family sitting down. It was this elderly man sitting next to me. And he would just, and I, I had my headphones on even, but he would just literally bother me <laughs> constantly. He was like, ooh, I have my iPad with me. And he had never seen something like that. So he's constantly kind of bumping me, which I'm like, I don't necessarily like being too close to people I don't know. <laughs> so I was like, oh, no, dude, please stop. Please stop bumping me with your elbow. And then he was like asking me another question. And then his son was there and he was like, I'm so sorry. <laughs> The man just couldn't stop talking to me. But that was an extreme case. <laughs> it was kind of cute, but also they sat there for a long time. <laughs> if you guys have any comic questions or things that you're running into creatively, comic-wise, story-wise, if you have a story problem, very you can give me very specific story problems. I love that. Uh, we'll probably ask you a ton of questions about it and we can just talk through your story if you want to. If you're watching on Instagram, you can actually join me live. That would mean that you're, you would have to join uh, the stream though, but you can actually join me in the stream and we can talk back and forth if you want to, if you have like very specific questions that can be helpful. So send me your comic questions. I know that... All of you, I think, were here yesterday. So you probably asked me all your comic questions yesterday. Uh, so yeah, just um, let me know what your creative like environment looks like or ask me your questions. In the meantime, I can pitch my new class, uh, maybe. Um, once more, <laughs> it's a class about setting up your action plan when you see a comic or when you're deep into your comic and you're like, I'm a little overwhelmed. How am I actually just doing this? Uh, then that can be uh, helpful as well to take the class because it is about how to work from a very large goal, like making a comic, wanting to be a comic creator, making a comic all the way to how do you actually make a practical actionable in your daily life how do you work with distractions procrastination how how do you keep your comic fun um how do you make the best environment for yourself uh, how to celebrate wins like when you get to milestones in your comic journey how are you going to celebrate that because that's super important uh because we have a tendency to just run through all of our milestones and not really think about them and just go for the next thing. And it's like super important to actually celebrate those wins to have that sense of progression. That's all like, there's all little things that really help you get motivated and stay motivated to work on your comic. So that's what the class is about on Skillshare. Um, you can get a free month of Skillshare through the link in the description on YouTube. Uh, again, DM me on instagram if you want to know more about the class i can actually send you the link you can get a month free of skillshare if you have not uh, yet made an account there if you have made an account there of course you can find my class uh, on there i'm pencils and stories again on uh, skillshare um yeah um let's see nephthalie is here hi Thank you for joining. It says, hi, I had a limited space. How could you make a short comic? Uh, limited space as in... If you have limited space, how could you make a short comic? Limited space as in uh, time? Limited space in your life? Is that what you're talking about? Sorry for not understanding. <laughs> oh, limited table space. Uh, could you make a short comic? Yeah. Um, would you want to make a, a comic on paper? Um, is that why you're asking? Because 
I, I, I actually believe that you can make comics on post-it notes if you wanted to. Like I personally, I have, I, I have created a comic project before where I was working on a three paper. So that might actually be um, a little harder on a small table. Uh, I'm sharing my art space with my brother and yes, on paper. Yeah. Um, yeah. It, it kind of depends if you want to make it like start to finish on paper because you could also, you could also, for example, have one of those, I'm not sure where you're from, but here we have like, a4, A5, A3, <laughs> paper sizes. Uh, A5 is about this big. Um, I like a, a sketchbook with really good paper uh, where I could actually ink on. And I just made a comic in that little sketchbook. And it's this small. So you don't necessarily need a lot of uh, space uh, on your table. And then you can scan it in really, really high res and then um, blow it up so it's like a large comic. I actually don't think that nowadays that you need to work super large. Um, yeah, you live in the US. I'm not sure what that size is. A5, is it like letter sized? Maybe? <laughs> I'm so sorry. I don't know the paper sizes in the US, but it's like this this big is what I made a comic in. And it's, you know, um, if you like to work super detailed, obviously it's uh, sometimes better to have like a very large uh, piece of paper. But but yeah, I definitely can think that you could make a comic on post-it notes if you wanted to. Um, just if you, if you have really simple drawings and you have a really simple style, for example, then you could just make those really beautiful and then, um, you know, you even use those and post them to Instagram or something like that. Um, but yeah, I'm, I'm just <laughs> trying to think about, I'm, yeah, I'm, a <laughs> I'm better now at it, but I used to have a really small desk. I still lived at my parents' house uh, and I would just put it, full with clutter as well. So I'm kind of used to not really having a lot of space, but I'm not a person who draws. It's not really good because you actually should draw from your shoulder and your elbow, but I'm not a person who does that. I just go in like this and then draw. Um, so I personally also don't really need a lot of space. So I would just try it out. I would just say, try it out uh, and see if it works for you. Uh, eventually, if it doesn't, you could even... Uh, you could even, I don't know, work on on the floors, what I have seen people do. Uh, or maybe bring your work. We have, I don't know if it's the same with you, but um, in our library, actually, in my city, uh, you can actually, there's a lot of, depends on the library where you go to, but there's like a large library. They have a lot of tables available where you could just sit and work. Um you know, if you have limited desk space at home, you could also look into those options, uh, places where you can, I don't know, co-work for free. Sometimes you have those spaces available. Uh, so that could be another option as well. Yes, letter size, eight by 11. It's going to be a comic with cut paper. Um, yeah. I would say try it out. If that doesn't work, um, yeah, try to find another solution. If it doesn't feel, you know, nice for you, um, you know, it can definitely it can definitely be done. You can just find. I would just encourage you to find find a creative solution <laughs> uh, for that. Maybe you could ha you have those um, uh, portable drawing tables, kind of a thing. Um, not sure if I, if I have it here. I had one. I don't know where it is. Oh, I built it into. <laughs> I've put it somewhere I cannot reach right now. Um, but it's like this large. And um, let's see, how do I explain it? It's like a wooden panel. 
that you can put in like three stances. It, it's basically like the same thing you have on Wacoms and stuff. Um, you can put it in three stances and then you could potentially just set it down somewhere. So set it down, set it down on your lap might actually be a little bit draining at one point maybe, but you could look into like smaller sized um, places that, that um, you know, but then you have the same issue, you have lesser space. <laughs> but, uh, you know, the one that I have is actually pretty large. So, yeah, that that letter, uh, the letter size paper definitely fits on there. And then you can maybe put it somewhere else. Um, maybe put it somewhere else on another table, for example, like a kitchen table, and then move it away again um, if somebody else needs to be there. Because this A5 is the closest to letter size. Oh, okay. But there are sketchbook in A sizes at Michael's and such. Yeah. Um, yeah, okay. So I guess letter size is more like A4. Um, yeah. I personally don't need that much space. But you would have to see what is um, comfortable for you. And if it isn't, then... Um, maybe find a space uh, that's free somewhere or even go to a cafe. Sometimes you have these really large tables. You would definitely be able to fit your stuff on there. Uh, some people have like a laptop and like notes and stuff. So they take a lot of space as well. So uh, <laughs> I would not uh, feel too bad about taking a little bit of space on a big table like that. Hope that's helpful. The little comic I made was in one of these. This is like A5. So yeah, that, that's probably smaller than letter size. Um, this is A4, just to give you a kind of an idea there. And letter size is, I think it's a little bit um, in between these two actually, from what I've seen. But yeah, I just made a comic in this. Works just as well. And if you scan it super big, then... Um, if you scan it super big, then you can actually just blow it up and make it larger as well. So thanks for the library suggestion. It was helpful. Okay, good. Yes. Yeah, it's often like spaces like public, like community spaces that sometimes have places for you to work. So I'll just look into that. I saw some people uh, commenting on Instagram. Queen. Quimmer, Quimmer, Quer, Quimmera Indie Comics. I'm so sorry. <laughs> I don't know how to pronounce your username. I love your comics and channel. Oh, thank you so much. That's awesome. How to achieve the balance between creating comics and other activities? Ah, yes, the cool question. Well, there's Michael Demble. Hello. <laughs> Hello, thank you so much for joining. That's a very good question about achieving balance between creating comics and other activities. Um, that's, it's a million dollar question. Uh, it really depends on how much you have on your plate right now. Um, some people, I would just say, don't expect to be able to put in 20 hours a week in your comic because you simply don't have it. So I would just say, this is super personal. To everyone, um, if you don't have a lot of time, like I mentioned before, try and find the small pockets of time. You can usually find 10 minutes, 15 minutes, maybe even 20 minutes a day somewhere. Um, and then block it in. <laughs> maybe put your phone on silent so you cannot be distracted by anything. Um, kind of make that a non-negotiable time for you if you only have the 20 minutes a day. Um, and then maybe have some more time on the weekend, for example, or in the evenings. Uh, I always say, like, if you have about 20 minutes a day or you can find one or two hours a week, um, try and, and find a balance between the amount of time that you have and then also uh, what kind of comic you're making. Because if you're going to do a large, epic, realistic style, full color um, super labor intensive comic, but you only have like one or two hours a week, then that's going to be really hard. So I actually have a large 
comic course, like a uh, not a class on Skillshare, but an actual course on making comics called How to Start a Comic. It takes you from start to finish all the way through the comic process. And what I actually recommend in there is to look at how much time do you have in your life to make comics. Ideally, what kind of comic would you like to make? What do you want the art style to be? And then also look at um, the length of your comic, like how long you're probably going to make it. And then um, this is one of those, oh, what's it called? It's one of those where you have like three, um, three overlapping uh, kind of circles and you can only pick two of them. What's that called? A Venn diagram, a Venn diagram. Uh, you have like the length of your comic, the style of your comic, and then the amount of time that you have to actually make the comic. You can only pick two of these things. And if you have a certain style that you have in your head and you have a certain amount of time in which you need your comic made and you don't want to spend years and years and years on it, that means you have to kind of compromise um, the length of the comic, which means that you would have a smaller comic, like a shorter comic that you're making. If the length of your comic doesn't matter to you, uh, you're super fine with working for years on your comic. This is me, by the way. <laughs> you have a certain style in mind. That doesn't mean that the comic is going to take a long time. And uh, uh, it, it huge, it's usually impacted by the um, amount of time that you have and how long the comic is eventually going to take you. I'm fine with that. I chose, <laughs> I chose that. Uh, but it really, really depends. Um, yeah, and Michael makes a good point. Work-life balance. Sometimes you just can't make comics because of life. But that doesn't mean that it's just life. Absolutely. Yeah, I can attest to that after last year. <laughs> uh, last year was just a mess. And I couldn't be creative because my brain just was mush. <laughs> my brain was absolute mush. Uh, and I, I did not like it because I was not going anywhere with all of my goals. Like, I couldn't work on my business. I had about 15 to 20 minutes of energy left after doing work. Um, and that I spent all of that time on working on my large course uh, so that that could be done. Um, yeah, and I couldn't make comics, which I really did not like. <laughs> and I'm going back into it uh, now again, like slowly building up the time. Uh, but yeah, like Michael says, sometimes it just doesn't work at all. And even the 10 minutes a day is it's a thing that's hard. But I would just sit down in your case. And <laughs> I wanted to say your name, but I still don't. Qui Quimara. Quimara. Indie comics. In your case, I would just sit down um, for a little while, actively, like honestly look in your planner and don't don't stuff all of your free time full with comic work because you do need a social life and you do need to take care of yourself and uh, other responsibilities that you might have. So honestly, looking at planning how much time you actually have, uh, how much time you want to spend um, on this comic in a week and then pick a comic project that fits that. If you already have a comic project, it's totally fine. Um, plan that comic work in your schedule. Plan it in because... If you're waiting for an opening <laughs> in your schedule, if you're waiting for the comic time to happen to you, that isn't going to happen because life is busy, life is full. And if you sit down and don't necessarily know what to do, your brain will grab the most easy thing that it can think of and it's probably social media. So definitely plan it in, um, plan it into your schedule. Uh, yeah, I hope that was helpful. By the way, if you have any follow-up questions, feel free to ask uh, in the comments. Mika has a question. Speaking of your larger course, do you have any plans to open it or open it up again? It is open. It is actually open. Uh, if you want to get the link, send me a DM and I can uh, send you to the page where you can actually get it. You could actually start your comic today if you want to. <laughs> Uh, I do have another course that's not open sometimes. It's a mentored course. Um, that's a different, like my self-study course is how to start a comic, comes to the Discord community, uh, but you work through that on, at your own pace because anybody can make the comic that they kind of want. And then I have a mentored course where any everybody kind of does the same thing. And that's called your comic journey. And that's where you would make a short comic in 10 weeks. And it's fully mentored. It goes into 
very specifically making comic pages. How to start a comic takes you through um, starting, coming up with ideas, uh, how to develop those ideas into something that is an actual story, and then writing the story, writing your outline, uh, designing your comic, designing your characters, and then eventually how to actually make pages, and then some productivity, um, you know, your comic system, files, <laughs> all that stuff in between, sprinkled in between. So that is my um, that is my course on how to start a comic. So DM me about that, and I can send you the link. Thanks for your interest, by the way. <laughs> if you're on YouTube and you want um, want to, um, you can actually just go to howtostartacomic.com. <laughs> I'm making this way more complicated than it needs to be. Howtostartacomic.com will take you there. <laughs> uh, Naftali has another question. How do you start a webcomic based on your current comic? Because the small comic I want to make is based off a concept from my larger comic. Ah, cool. A spin-off comic to make people excited about your larger comic. That is cool. Uh, let's see. How do you start a webcomic based on your current comic? So do you mean how to start your small comic based on the larger comic idea that you have? Or do you mean... Uh, how do you turn your small comic into the large comic? While you're typing that, <laughs> Mika says, oh, I meant a mentorship. Oh, the mentor course. Um, yeah, I have this vague idea in my head that I want to open it up in November. But what I actually want to do, because last time I taught the whole thing live and then we did feedback, um, I actually just want to record the information in video before. So I need to shoot a lot of video um, for that course. So the actual face-to-face -face mentoring is purely for asking questions and uh, feedback on your comic work that you did for that week. So my aim is November-ish. <laughs> I really hope uh, I can start on that soon. But... Um, no promises. <laughs> Waiting for Naftali's uh, comment. How to take the small comic to get people to read my larger comic. Right, yeah. Um, if the small comic is a thing that you're going to post first, um, I think it might be good to kind of hint that there's a larger story in your small comic. Like it, ideally you want your characters um, and the events be really interesting. So people are like, Oh, I want more. I want more about these characters. Um, but if you, if you post a small comic on the internet, for example, you can just hint at it constantly. Like say, like they, they they are part of a larger comic that I have. That comic is coming, so follow me, <laughs> follow me, so you can actually read my larger comic later. You could already also post some side sketches. Sometimes that really helps as well. Uh, like characters in like smaller scenes from your larger comic, where people are like, "Ooh, there's more going on with these characters than even you know reading from the small comic." Um, Yeah, we just just kind of constantly hint at the fact that it's to be continued <laughs> and that people can read more about the characters or get people as excited about your characters and their backstories or the, the world idea that you have as possible uh, with your smaller comic and then hook them so they don't leave when you start, you know, posting, posting the larger comic and keep hinting at it that it's coming, share some work in progress. People love that as well uh, for the for the larger comic. Um, yeah, keep teasing people. Teasing people really, really helps. Um, keep sharing the behind the scenes stuff, I would say, especially. People love that. If you're already working on next to a smaller one um, and otherwise side sketches, just um, trying to think of their name, but oh no, I cannot remember. 
You have a lot of artists actually on, they were very prevalent on DeviantArt, but there are also a lot on Twitter that just have like a bunch of original characters and they will just draw little tiny scenes of the characters interacting together, for example. And it gets people so curious about other um, stories about these characters. Like You will have people in comments saying, is there a comic that I can read somewhere? Is this from a story? Where is this from? I'm so intrigued. So if you can um, create a situation like that, that would be ideal. I'm not sure if I'm answering your question at all. Let me know if it's uh, helpful or not. If it's not, just ask me for clarification. I'm happy to clarify. I see, oh, there you are. I see because I do want to be able to start my own YouTube channel to promote my comic art. Ooh, that's interesting. Um, yeah, what would your YouTube channel be, uh, be about? Is it you um, making the comic? Because it's super interesting to just study a lot of comic artists on uh, video platforms. Um, especially TikTok. There's a few web comic, uh, webtoon creators that are actually on TikTok just doing some really cool stuff. They will just find sounds and then just for some reason it really fits their characters and it really fits their story and just, they just film comic panels that they did and then put that sound over it. Um, I know there's people doing that on YouTube as well for a little bit longer videos. I would definitely look into those and see how those people are doing that. If you're more into the behind the scenes stuff, people really, really love to see how you make comics, like very specifically how you make comics. People love seeing other people sketch uh, and making comics. So um, yeah, I would, I would go hard on the behind the scenes. Like I'm not sure where you are in your comic process, but I always recommend if you want to become a web comic artist, be as visible as possible. Uh, if your comic is not online yet, share the heck out of it that it's coming uh, with all the behind the scenes stuff and maybe some side sketches to make get people curious. Uh, if you scroll back very far on my Instagram, you can actually see that I did that as well before the launch of my webcomic. And people were super excited for it. I did eventually when it came closer to the launch, I did these um, countdown images like just random illustrations of my characters with a countdown with a countdown on it. Um, so people really, really got it drilled into their heads when my comic was launching and people were super excited. And uh, my launch day is actually still my most visited day on my website, uh, on my comic website, because I just, I hyped the launch so much with all of the behind the scenes stuff and the, and the drawings. Um, so that really, really helps. Let's see, Lemur asks, I just keep calling you Lemur because I don't know how to pronounce that other way. Lemur cohort, cohort or cohorte. Do you finish writing a story before you even start drawing? Like, do you even know what's in the speech bubbles? No. <laughs> I am a person who does not do that. There's probably pros and cons for both. Uh, I personally like to make things as simple as possible. So what I do is... I do have a finished outline. I, I do advocate for having a solid story structure. And with story structure, I mean, you have a beginning, you have a good setup, then something happens, your character goes through all kinds of obstacles and stuff and they learn things. And then eventually they get to like an epiphany and then um, they go into and um, they're kind of like tested on their new found knowledge and then you end the story, uh, which is kind of the structure that I use. Um, so I would definitely recommend you having an outline. But when an outline, I mean just the scenes. Um, I personally, also because I just change things up all the time, when I start working on a scene, uh, that's when I start thinking about dialogue. Uh, so I will bullet point out the scenes first, make sure that my story is solid, that structurally it makes sense. And then I will take every single bullet point when I start working on the scene. And then I bullet out the entire scene of like, this happens and this happens and this happens. Um, don't even put dialogue in there. <laughs> um, that's actually more at the point when I start the thumbnails, because sometimes the thumbnails give me new ideas for dialogue as well. So um, I will put all my initial ideas in there in the bullet points. Um, and then, so, and then I um, I do the thumbnails. 
yeah, I'm I'm really flexible <laughs> with uh, with the dialogue actually with the stuff that goes into the speech bubbles um, because I ideally you want to you want to make it as succinct as possible as well so sometimes I will even change up text when I'm lettering and what I do lately is that I actually letter before I do like my final layout so I will have kind of like a layout um, sometimes but then before I go super detailed with sketches and everything I will I will definitely letter before because if you already have your uh, speech balloons in there, you know how much room you have for the rest of the composition. You can actually make a nice flow of the balloons on the page as well, and then um, put the drawings in so that it all works together really well. Um, but yeah, sometimes you would even on a page uh, still uh, work on the dialogue and making it shorter and shorter and uh, so you don't have like a, a page full of speech balloons. So, no, not in detail. Absolutely not. I will have a finished outline and that's it. That's when I start actually working on the scenes themselves and actually start drawing as well. Next to the um, commented on her small comic. My comic is about Haitian culture with a sci-fi and supernatural... Uh, to educate people on Haitian, oh, sorry, I don't know if you, if I pronounced that right, from Haiti. <laughs> Haitian, is that how you pronounce that? I'm so sorry, guys, English is not my first language. Um, culture and represent Haitian characters in a positive way. That is awesome. That's what my YouTube channel will be. That is such a cool, um, a super specific thing that's very, very good for social media and for YouTube as well. That's awesome. So you would you would combine um, making comics with education about uh, the culture of Haiti. That's awesome. Yeah, you could turn it into something really special. And then especially because you have characters, um, you know, people relate to characters because, you know, they're like us and characters have emotions and that's what we relate to. Uh, so, yeah, you could really build some hype around your comic uh, on YouTube. But yeah, my um, my advice would be to, to see what other people are doing uh, their comic because I personally, I use my comic stuff to talk about making comics on my YouTube channel, which is a different kind of approach. Um, with you, it would be way more about the comic itself and about the story uh, and about the background and how you approach um, making your comic and then educating people. So you could even, um, yeah, you could even blend it with um, the comic, but then also images of uh, Haitian culture. You pronounce it where you got to represent the... Haitian characters? Is it Haitian? Haitian? <laughs> Probably mispronouncing it. I'm so sorry. But that's awesome. Yeah. Good luck. Good luck. That would be great to see. And you have like the very, very specific angle, which is uh, which is great as well. Lemur says, Lemur is okay. Okay, thank you guys. <laughs> uh, usernames, names, am I right? <laughs> Bethany says, any tips on building new work habits when your life lacks consistent routine? Yeah. Um, figure out what works for you, I would say, um, because what works for one person might not work for another person. Uh, I always use the example of time blocking. Um, that does not work for me. Like if, 
if I'm writing down that I'm going to do something at a certain time of the day, it's it's a given that I'm not going to do it. For some reason, when the time comes, I don't want to do it. So even for comic work, I just, um, I will have like an, uh, an estimate and it's more of like afternoon or morning or something like that. And then I will have to find, uh, if I'm pressed for time, my um, goal is to have like, 20 minutes in the morning, for example, but I will not say like, I'm going to do it at 10 30 in the morning because for some reason it, it always throws me off and I never, I can never make things on time and then I'm behind and you know, it just doesn't work for me. But for some people that really, really works to just block in time. So they know in their heads, it's like, I don't have to think about that. I don't have to decide when I'm going to do it. I know that 10 o'clock is comic time or 10 o'clock is I don't know, cleaning my house time. So they really, really block it all in. Um, <laughs> Nepsi says to go to Google Translate. <laughs> you can hear how it's pronounced. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to do that after the live stream. But uh, I know what you, I know which country you mean. It's just that I'm not sure how to pronounce it in English. <laughs> um, yeah, but uh, back to the work, um, the work habits. Just start small, um, pick one habit to work on, uh, and then start small again with the 10 minutes, 20 minutes, um, figure out what's not overwhelming to you. And yeah, I would just say s schedule it in. You can time block it like very specific time, or you can just put it, for example, at an evening and just say to everybody, like, I'm not available. <laughs> I'm working. <laughs> um, yeah, just start small and then build it out is what I would say. Um, you know, saying like, I'm good. Like people would say like, I'm going to work out for an hour every day. And then, you know, they fall off the bandwagon. I'm like, start, start by working out for 10 minutes. And then, you know, eventually you get into the habit of just doing it. And then you can build out the time is what I usually recommend. But also really work with what works for you. I hope it's helpful um, today, everyone. Thank you all so much for coming and for coming back as well. That's awesome. Because he says, makes sense. Thanks. No problem. I hope it works for you. Uh, let me know if you find a uh, way of working that works for you. I would be interested in, I'm always interested in that stuff, like productivity and, and stuff. Any other questions or something I can clarify from before? Is there anything you're running into right now very specifically? We're already going for an hour again. Are you really serious? Oh, wow. Time flies when you're having fun. <laughs> Thought we were going for 30 minutes or something. No more questions? Remarks? <laughs> I hope I answered your question, uh, Naphtali, about your um, how to approach that and also with YouTube. Study a lot of people who do it right, especially on YouTube, like see what people are having success with and try and find out why that is. Um, is it because people relate to the characters, like scroll through the comments, like what kind of comments are people leaving? Like what is the most helpful or what is most fun for them to follow? Nestle says, I appreciate your encouragement. You're not the only art YouTuber to allow me to push my work and want to see my comic grow. 
That's good to hear. I'm not the only one. Uh, hold on to those people <laughs> that you're following. Yeah, I would. I'm. I'm always super interested in in how people um, do their work, especially if if you're gonna combine it with YouTube, uh, because I don't think many people do that. Um, like compared with how many artists there are, there there are actually a lot of artists. There's also some artists on Twitch, um, which is interesting as well. But it's usually people to stream working on their pages, for example. Uh, which could be fun as well, but you can stream on YouTube as well. But actually making dedicated videos about your comic and, um, you know, especially about specific subjects like that, that is, um, that's super interesting. And it's good, like, uh, aside from the fact you're probably super passionate about this and you want to create this comic that educates people as well and have this YouTube channel that educates people as well. Like um, audience growth wise, it's always super helpful to be known for something. <laughs> like a lot of artists kind of bristle against that idea because they don't want to be put in a box and they're like, yeah, but what if I want to do something else? Uh, eventually you can just do something else and people will grow with you, of course. But having something that, um, that you're known for uh, could be really beneficial, especially on, on platforms like YouTube. Oh, I think you're uh, writing a new comment because <laughs> it's what you're writing. There's not that many positive repression, representation. Wow. Representation of, I'm sorry, here I go again. Hi. Haitian culture and characters. Yeah, not that many positive representation. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah. Yeah, so it's super important. Can get people super interested, you know, and curious. And I think that's the power of storytelling as well, like not just the education part. Um, of it, but also um, telling stories with your with your characters. Um, you know, the power of storytelling is that people can um, put themselves in somebody else's shoes uh, for a little while. It's why, it's why uh, sometimes you see these sentiments online of where people are like, well, I just do art and there's so much stuff going on in the world. Like, what is my art even contributing? But art and stories are so powerful. Um, I've heard from people who are like, uh, re read a story, saw a movie, read a comic, and they were like, I never thought of X like, like that before, or I just didn't really know much about it. And they just literally changed their minds. And I think story, story helps us relate to each other uh, so much. So that's awesome. Yeah, go for it. Go for it. I think there was another question that I might have missed. Uh, Mochiness is back. Hi. Hello. How often are you planning on doing these live streams? I love doing live streams. Um, this week I'm doing, doing it three times. Um, I'm still getting back into making videos. Um, and the live streams are really, I, it's really fun. Like, I love talking to you guys live. Like, I, I love it. Like, I get so enthusiastic about it. Um, you know, I, uh, yesterday too, like I ended the live stream and I was like, this was really, really fun. Um, but the live streams, um, First of all, they take quite some preparation. Like you have to get people in live. So I actually have to promote it quite a bit. Uh, and then they don't necessarily perform as well as regular videos on YouTube because they're in a different tab, I think, on a mobile app. Um, well, at least I don't know. For me, they are. But that's probably because I'm the creator of them. <laughs> but like, I don't know. They, they just don't perform that well. Also because they're super long and and... People are, um, longer videos don't do very well anymore uh, on a platform. Uh, so, 
yeah, it's not that I don't because of that reason, but I need to make um, regular videos as well. That's my point. And that takes time and I'm still building up like, um, uh, you know, my creative stamina again. So I'm not sure, but I love doing live streams. Like eventually if I want, if I'm doing this more full time, which I'm not in, in the possibility of doing right now. Uh, but if I do more, more, um, full time, I would actually start streaming way more, um, probably on YouTube and Twitch. Um, still not sure about the Twitch thing, but, um, yeah, I would love to do that and also do like more streaming about actually making my comic and showing all of that. But now I, I actually have to focus a lot on doing video again, because I do want to grow the channel, um, and do want to grow my business. So that's, uh, important, but you can uh, join in again on Friday. So, um, but that, but after that, I don't have a specific plan on doing them. Maybe maybe once a month or something that could be fun. Uh, but I'm, I'm just not sure yet. So I can't promise you anything, <laughs> but thanks so much for your interest. Uh, it's good to hear that you like them. Nestle says, um, since my family is from, hey, um, <laughs> I wanted to say it in Dutch, but in English is Haiti, I think. And the media just shows the poor side of the country and comics with characters that have voodoo as their powers. Oh, I want to show that's not the case of my characters. Hmm, yeah. Oh, yeah, I can imagine, like, media. Media is always, like, stereotypes so much. Um, yeah. Yeah, that's a cool um, why you're doing it kind of thing, which is always really powerful. When we're talking about motivation, uh, motivation for making comics, then that kind of stuff also really helps. Um, sometimes really helps to have a very specific message in your comic, in your story, um, uh, or in your case, just very specific, like an entire world. Uh, showing the entire, um, like, entire culture. In your case, like, an actual existing culture. But then mixed with the sci-fi and, uh, and the supernatural stuff. Fun. Sounds like a fun comic, too, to make. Machina says, things like this is why the individual voice is so important. Hope you get to tell that story soon. Yes. We're rooting for you. <laughs> Go for it. Awesome. I think we're um, about done. I, di I didn't see any new questions pop in. Uh, also not on Instagram. Let me check that. No new questions. Nothing that I missed there? No, I don't think so. Yeah, I've never seen a comic with uh, with Haitian characters. Hi, 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 characters from Haiti. Machines asks, "How long do you think you'll be able to finish your current comic?" Is that a question for me or for Neftali? <laughs> think you said it was going to be ten chapters. Um. Oh, for me, Reckless City. I, uh, originally nine, I think, with little in-between snippets. Um, not to spoil anything, but uh, <laughs> some flashback stuff. Um, but I'm currently rewriting some things. It'll probably still be around nine chapters. I'm working on chapter two right now. <laughs> Answers from both parties work too, yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, about nine nine to 10 chapters is going to be a long story. But like I mentioned yesterday, I'm one of those people who can actually get super engaged with a story for a really, really long time. Um, I do have other comic ideas though, that I eventually want to go to. There's one in particular that I'm like, yes, that's going to be my next one. Um, going to be a little shorter, I think, 
but I'm not sure yet how labor intensive it's going to be because I have a very specific style in mind. Um, yeah, but Recollection City is just going to take me quite some years. <laughs> but like I mentioned, I love that. There's people who probably should not do that because they have so many ideas and and they get bored sometimes with art styles and um, uh, maybe even with storylines or characters um, or just takes too long and they maybe just need to make a comic with a simpler style. Like um, definitely make comics that fit you as a person as well. <laughs> Yeah, but I love working for long periods of time on something. If I if I love it and it's mine, um, and I love I love my characters. Um, I think that's actually like a almost a requirement. I think for you to be really really in love with either your characters or your world or everything. Um, yeah, and I have so much stuff to learn to draw as well. It's all coming up in my comics, so I'm excited for it. And I'm kind of dreading it as well. <laughs> There's some scenes where I'm like, right now, I cannot execute it as it is in my head yet. Um, but I'm working on it. Like, try to work on um, art improvement on the side. If he says, my larger comic is 96 chapters. So I'm doing six chapters with four volumes for four story arcs. Wow. 96 chapters. Are those long chapters? Or is it like a chapter for like a webtoon episode chapter kind of thing? Wow. It's cool that you're doing a shorter comic first. You know, kind of try to find uh, like nail this. It's, it, it can be really good to kind of nail the style. Um, kind of set up things and see how you want to do things before you dive into the, the larger one. Machina says, one last question. I currently work full time. How do you find the time to work on comics while taking on other work? Yeah, I have the same issue. <laughs> uh, it's, um, it's, yeah, finding the little spots, finding the little blocks of time, like the 10 minutes, the 20 minutes. Um, and kind of get yourself in the habit of thinking like, oh, I have time. Like, no, I'm not going to go on social media right now. Um, I'm actually going to work on my comic. I know people who actually delete, unless they post something on social media, they actually delete the apps of their on their phone. So they're constantly like reinstalling the apps as soon as they need to do something with social media, just because it's such a time suck. Um, yeah, and find... find some pockets of time. Look in your uh, schedule. In my larger uh, comic course, I actually recommend to time track for two weeks. Um, really track your time and see what you're doing, what you're actually doing. Because sometimes you think you know, but unless you actually track something, you kind of don't see where you have little blocks of time where you were doing something random or... Um, you know, kind of what your habits are. It's very good to see that if you if you track <laughs> rigorously, track your time for two weeks. Uh, it's a tedious thing to do. I've done it two times now. Uh, it's tedious, but it really gives you a lot of insights in where you could actually maybe find some time to work on your comic, something that you could maybe drop uh, in favor of making comics uh, and then plan it in, just plan plan the comic time in and make use of the small blocks. If you're waiting somewhere, if you're sitting in a train, uh, if you, um, I don't know, waiting for your spaghetti to cook, <laughs> you know, the little tiny blocks of time, do a little bit of writing for your comic, like have a little notebook on you at all times. That's something that, uh, that I um, would recommend. Nestle says there's long chapters for each volume. Oh, wow. That's a dedication. <laughs> Make sure you, you, you love, you know, put as much stuff that you'll love to draw in as possible. If it's nature, put in a lot of nature, uh, you know, have fun with your characters, have fun with your character designs. That all helps. Machina says, I actually have a hard time staying on something for years so that's interesting. I have to alternate or bounce between projects to keep the steam rolling. Yeah.
yeah. So you could have multiple projects next to each other, which I sometimes find like I would not be able to do it because I would probably procrastinate with the other project on the project that I actually need to be doing. <laughs> oh, I can see that happening so fast. <laughs> like, but I'm also working on this, so I can just work on this for a few weeks, and then that is stuck because I'm stuck. <laughs> uh, yeah, so you could do that, or um, you know, have shorter projects. And I don't know if you have a project that um, that you're working on right now and how long it is, but um, but yeah, if you have multiple multiple projects, like not every comic needs to be hundreds and hundreds of pages long. Yeah, <laughs> YouTube hid your comment. <laughs> Social media is a double-bladed sword and can be a huge time suck. Yes. Other project would be much smaller, yeah. We're in the line of illustrations or scenes. Have you dealt with toxic people for your comic? Not yet. <laughs> not yet. Um, no. And I'm also not, like, I'm not a person who, like, Googles what people are saying. Like, my comic is not, uh, like, my audience is not big enough yet to have trolls. Um, no. I had, well, not really toxic people, I guess, for YouTube even though I had like a few nasty comments, but that's, that's YouTube for you. <laughs> YouTube is, is sometimes, you know, the audience is sometimes just like that a little bit. Uh, I just, um, I had one very specific comic comment that um, was about my appearance. I don't think that would happen too fast with comics because I don't necessarily put my face on there. Um, <laughs> I actually had somebody saying something nasty about a character of mine on Webtoon. Um, but you know, I don't mind. It's people can think what they want to think. Uh, if it's that specific comic about my appearance, I let it um stay below the video for I think a few months just to show that it didn't bother me mostly for myself just to show myself that it didn't bother me like if you go around you know making those statements to people uh, you probably have bigger issues than I do uh, you know it says more about the person than it says about you uh, it still was you know a weak spot because I have been bullied severely uh, in school before. So eventually I did remove the comments after I proved <laughs> to myself enough that I was uh, super not bothered by it. Um, so, you know, you can always hide comments everywhere, I think, or even delete them. Uh, you can block people, mute people. I actually, you know, I do that a lot sometimes on Twitter. People are just starting to pick a fight for no reason. You know, just, just block them. Um, you know, especially don't go into discussion with them. Don't react to those comments at all. Uh, block, mute, hide, delete, or leave it up. You know, sometimes people will come to your aid. <laughs> but then that can get nasty as well. So I would probably rather delete it then. But, um, you know, uh, don't react would be my um, advice. Fluffy Fox. <laughs> Hello, Fluffy Fox. Uh, that's such a cute username. I have a question. How much did you write before making the pages and thumbnails? Uh, I write my outline in bullet points. And that I want to be super solid. I want a solid story before I start making pages. Um, and then I will, I will expand those bullet points into... Uh, like actually writing down what happens. Like my outline is my scenes. And then per scene, I will make a new bullet point list of the stuff that happens in the scene. Uh, but sometimes I will start that when I actually start the thumbnails for that scene. So um, yeah, I do recommend a solid story, beginning, middle, ending, solid story structure. Um, 
And I always recommend, if you want to know more about story structure, I always recommend the book Save the Cat by Blake Snyder and Invisible Ink by Brian McDonald to start out with. There's so many books on writing, <laughs> so many. Uh, when it comes to story structure, there's quite a few structures out there, like pre, um, pre-made structures, structures that you can just fill in. I use the Save the Cat structure mostly. It's very Hollywood, very movie-like, which fits me. Other people use the hero's journey, for example, which I find personally very confusing, but a lot of people find it really helpful. So you have to find kind of a structure that works for you, uh, that you feel comfortable with, and that you kind of, that helps you understand story in a way that you can easily structure your story. Uh, and then um, throw out a first draft and then edit that and then edit it some more and edit it some more until you have like a solid uh, list of scenes, a solid story that makes sense, characters that have character progression, um, characters that grow, that have obstacles that they overcome. Um, yeah, so definitely uh, beginning middle, uh, in place. And then I personally start the expanding of those bullet points and actually start working on a scene very specifically when I start the thumbnails. So I will write the scene and I will figure that scene out and then I do the thumbnails and then I make pages um, and so on and so on. Hope that makes sense. Machina says, fingers crossed it doesn't happen. I think you're commenting on the uh, toxic uh, troll comments. That's awful people like that. Yeah, I agree, yeah. It made sense. Okay, awesome. Thanks, Fluffy Fox. Let's see if there's any questions on Instagram. Not yet. Mimi Lala is watching David White draws. Hi, David. <laughs> Hi, Mimi Lala. <laughs> Thank you so much for watching, guys. Says, Thank you, because my larger comic is a manga style. I feel like since I'm not Japanese, that people will be toxic to me. But I'll definitely delete those comments. Yeah, uh, I think a lot of people make manga nowadays, right? Like there's a, sometimes a discussion if you can actually call it a manga because it's not made by a mangaka. But this, you know, don't, don't engage in those kinds of discussions, I would say. Just buy, just use the style that you're comfortable with, a style that comes easy to you because, um, you know, drawing comics and then also having figuring out your style sometimes can be a little hard. Uh, so find something that you, you love. And when you're super inspired by manga and uh, your style is manga, just go for it. Which is, thank you, this was helpful. Awesome. <laughs> Hi, David, on Instagram. <laughs> I love your drawings. <laughs> I always love David. David White draws on Instagram. Uh, draws cool dwarfs. <laughs> and cool self-portraits. I loved your your late, late um, your last self-portrait. Latest, wow. Couldn't think of the word latest. My brain is getting a little tired, I think. We've been going for almost one and a half hours, guys. My voice is still fine, <laughs> which is cool. Awesome. If there's any last minute urgent questions, throw them in, throw them in <laughs> right now because otherwise I'm going to end the stream. Machines, do you have a lot of different stories? I have two that are... Actually, if you're tired, you don't have to answer. No, it's fine. <laughs> it's fine. Uh, I just get a little slower with my English uh, when time progresses. Um, I have two that are actually solid in my head that I want to make them. And then I have a lot of ideas. <laughs> but those are just ideas. They're just simple, really simple ideas um, that I just write out somewhere. Like I always recommend having an idea log. Um, because then your brain can, otherwise it might get stuck in your brain because you don't want to forget it and you will forget it eventually. Like my, in my experience, ideas, I will just forget ideas. Uh, and sometimes ideas just need to sit down and simmer a little bit. And then you need to come back to them after two weeks and kind of see if you still are excited by the idea as well. 
excuse me. Um, but yeah, I would just lock them somewhere so your brain knows that they're safe <laughs> and you won't forget them. Uh, and then let it go and focus on your current project again. And fortunately, I, I can do that really easily. Uh, so it's fine. I appreciate it. That's why you're awesome. Thank you so much. You are you guys are awesome. You keep coming to these live streams, just hanging out with me for one and a half hours. Shout out to all of you guys. People, <laughs> I should say. <laughs> Still don't know, guys. It's so like gendery. Um but uh, yeah, shout out to all of you. Uh, thank you all so much. Like I do see you people uh, like coming back on my posts, on my videos and like and commenting and everything. So shout out to all of you. You're awesome. Which is I had a black book, but I moved to a Google Doc. Whatever works, whatever works. So nice, nice though to have a document or you know a notebook with like ideas. And sometimes you read back, and you're like, "What is this?" <laughs> or, oh, I thought that was fun back then." Like the worst thing sometimes is actually wanting to hold on to all of your ideas. Like I had a few ideas for illustration series that never came to fruition. Is still kind of cool. So you still want to hang on to them. Eventually, it's also just fine to just cross off ideas of the list again that you don't want to do anymore because we will always have more ideas that we can <laughs> then we can actually work on. That's unfortunately how it works for us uh, artists. Yep. Awesome. Thank you all so much for coming to the live stream. There will be another live stream on Friday, same time, 7 p.m. Central European time for the people in the US. This is 10 a.m. PDT, uh, so uh, West Coast. Um, so you can calculate <laughs> where it is on your place on the map. Uh, same time, we are going to talk about habits, no uh, actions. Yeah, how to plan your comic work into your day-to-day -day life. Um, so that's more practical stuff. Uh, and then you can bring me some common questions again. Um, you know, if you in between in these two days run into something, uh, bring it in, uh, talk to me about it. I, you know, will help you to the best of my ability. And maybe other people uh, in the comments can help you as well. So, yeah. I know how it feels there. Uh, yeah, there always feels like there isn't enough time. <laughs> I know. I know. I know. Uh, hope to make it to the next stream. That would be awesome. Uh, awesome to see you again. Yay. That means says thanks again. Hopefully I'll be there Friday too. You are all awesome. I would love to see you there. Uh, thank you so much for watching. Uh, go make some comics if you have some time today. If it's not uh, evening yet where you are. And yeah. Uh, if you have any questions about classes, courses, anything... Uh, just shoot me a DM somewhere. I'm on Twitter, pencils underscore stories, Instagram, pencils and stories, uh, or just comment on YouTube below this video. Um, Skillshare class link is in the description below. If you want to check it out, you can get a free month of Skillshare with the link. Um, that was it, I think. Thanks, Mika, for joining on Instagram. <laughs> and bye, people on YouTube as well. I'm waving to both of you. <laughs> <laughs> uh, have an awesome Friday. Bye, guys. <laughs>